Welcome, everybody, to the 35th episode of the Hashtag Invest This podcast. Very blessed to have Kristen Chasper with me here today, uh, currently in uh, out of San Diego, uh, California, living. Uh, a little bit about him. He, he helps entrepreneurs become the person they're, that's capable of building the company and lives that they really want as a young entrepreneur. He's already built two successful companies by the age of 25. Starting out in college, he built a franchise from zero to 1.2 million in annual revenue, and then co-founded the real estate development company, CC Solutions, and grew it to 4 million in revenue in under two years. He's also the author of the number one best-selling book, Lose the Limits, Break Your Limit Beliefs, Become a More Productive You, Achieve Everything You Want in Life. The secret to his success lies in the systems he uses for both his personal life and his business. So, with that being said, Christian, welcome to the call. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, Scott. I'm doing phenomenal. Good, man. Why don't you give the listeners a little bit more kind of about your background? I know I give a little bit. Um, and what you're focused on now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my entrepreneurial career started uh, in college, actually. Junior year of college, I was applying to law schools when I saw this flyer for an internship on campus where I basically could run my own franchise of an exterior painting company. On the flyer, it said make 10 to 12 grand over the summer. I said, sign me up. I'll do, I'll do anything as a broke college student and make 10 G's over the summer. Right. Uh, so did that. You know, it was the hardest summer of my entire life. Uh, definitely shed a few tears, but I learned how to run a business, basically. I learned how to do sales, marketing, manage my own painters, et cetera, um, and had a great summer and realized I loved entrepreneurship. So I did that for another few years, built that division up in Boston to $1.2 million, left to start the real estate development company, CC Solutions, and spent the last two years building that up. Once again, shedding a few tears, uh, hustling, learning a lot about business and myself, learning a lot about systems and processes, and recently just sold my equity in that company to start Elevate Advisors, which now I'm helping seven-figure entrepreneurs systemize their companies so that they can gain the freedom they want and make the impact they want. Right, right. Well, let's uh, let's kind of back up because I'm, I'm interested to hear about the paint uh, franchise and how that works. So you bought into the franchise. Is that how that worked? Or did you work for a company that had bought into the franchise? Explain that a little bit. Yeah, phenomenal question. It's an interesting business model. So you don't have to do any of the buying in like in a normal franchise. What you basically do is they train you on how to run a business, how to do everything from the door to door knocking to the sales, to the hiring of the painters, et cetera, you give your royalty to the franchisor and then you keep the profit that's left over. So it's kind of, it's an internship program through student painters, young entrepreneurs across America, uh, but in essence, you're running your own franchise. Right. So it's, it's an awesome, it's basically the best entrepreneurial education somebody can get in college. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it, it's, you know, I did a similar thing while I was in college. Um, it wasn't um, it wasn't a franchise by any means, but I owned and operated a small car detailing company that you know was sounds like it was probably pretty similar. You know, it just kind of gives you the basic outlines of what business is, how to generate revenue, how to do um, you know basic uh, P and Ls, and and make sure that all of that's working. Not to mention, you know, the marketing and sales side, because ultimately that is what fuels the business, right, is the marketing and the sales. So what, what would you say your biggest takeaway from that really was, I mean, th through that experience? Yeah, biggest takeaway for me in particular was it really opened my eyes to a whole new way of, like you said, generating revenue and generating money. I, I come from a really small town in New Jersey where – I thought entrepreneurs were these mythic beings that you had to be born into. Um, I didn't even know what personal development was or entrepreneurship was. So for me, running my own business, making my own money, and really earning it while you know the rest of my college friends were doing normal summer jobs, right. totally opened my mind to a whole new world. And from there, just be, became an entrepreneur the whole way through and never really stopped. So that was definitely the biggest takeaway. The hard skills of sales, marketing, management obviously came along with that. But with that mindset shift, uh, everything changed. Yeah, and I think you nailed it on the head right there with the mindset shift because being an entrepreneur really is a, a mindset. You know, um, going out there, generating revenue, having your own company, having your own business is, is 
I guess, the tangible asset. But it's really a decision that happens in between your ears that uh, you have to decide, uh, you know, which route you want to go. And, um, you know, it sounds like you made that decision around the same time I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Mindset's huge for entrepreneurship. And with personal development as well. You know, I think that a lot of people maybe underestimate what the power of personal development is. And until you are, until you are right in your head, you're never going to be right outside your head. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you agree to that? Yeah, totally. I, I always think to myself and I tell other people, you, your business can't grow past the point of your personal growth. Like you need to keep growing in order for your business to continue growing. And I experienced that wall with CC solutions. There was a point in the business where we hit a hard wall and we were stuck. We were going down, we were burning money. And I realized it was because I wasn't being the person capable of running a seven figure business and I needed to change. So yeah, I think personal development is pretty underrated in the entrepreneurial world. I know it's, it's popular, but it's, how important it is, is underrated. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes even beyond the entrepreneurial world. Right. Um, I think more and more people are, are waking up, um, which is what I, you know, like to, I know you're familiar with that term, but waking up and, and becoming aware of really what, you know, what's going on. You have to be consistently learning, you know, in a, in a technology age that we live in now, there's so much information out there constantly and things are changing so way faster than what we can even comprehend with, you know, with regards to technology. So that, that you're always out there learning, figuring out new ways to do things, how to innovate, how to be a little bit different is very important. So I, you know, I appreciate you bringing that up. So let's talk about kind of, um, let's go two routes. One, the real estate investment space. Obviously this is a real estate investment podcast. So how did you get into that? Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, for sure. So after building that franchise up in Boston, me and my business partner, Alex, we were basically like, okay, cool. We got some success. We built a division from scratch to 1.2 million in 10 months. Let's go do our own thing. And we looked at what routes to take. And logically speaking, 71% you know, of self-made millionaires did it in real estate. And oh yeah, baby. We huh? I said, oh yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> plug real estate. Um, so we looked at it, we figured that with our background in some type of contracting construction, because we ran the exterior painting business that we could have some fast success in real estate. So it was a very logical decision. And the way we got started was we learned about pre foreclosures and we literally hit the streets, started knocking on doors, going door to door to pre foreclosures and building up the company like that. So it was very guerrilla. We had no money. We, we actually quit our job, bought a triplex, and then started the real estate company in the same week. Okay. So it was very fast, hip, gun at the hip uh, type of style of starting the business. Hey, man, the time is now, right? I mean, you know, good for you. So, you know, chasing pre-foreclosures, were, were you buying them and then wholesaling them? Were you fixing and flipping them? What were you doing at that point? Yeah, great question. So we started out with the idea of wholesaling them just because, like I said, we put all our money in the triplex that we were renting out. So we needed to start bringing some cash flow. Yeah. Uh, in that process, we wholesaled a couple of a couple of properties, but more importantly, we found rehabbers and real estate developers that we were wholesaling to that took us under their wing and started to mentor us in the ways of development. So we quickly realized that we were leaving so much money on the table wholesaling the properties. We then started to flip single families. And then from there, very quickly, we moved into the city of Boston and we started doing value ads where we were looking for single families that we could knock down and build three units or looking for a two unit that we could turn to a three unit. So that's, that's where we played most of our, our game in, but we started out wholesaling pre foreclosures. Definitely. So um, obviously that's a big turn, right? I know from experience that getting into ground up de development stuff where you're knocking stuff down, rebuilding new, there's a lot more moving parts than even just typical fix and flip. Um, how did you navigate through that? Because uh, you know, that's not an easy task. Yeah. Great question. Once again, we partnered up and found mentors that have already done it. So a big, big way that we got fast success was one being completely open and honest with people in terms of, Hey, this is where we want to go. This is what we know. This is what we don't know. This is the value that we can add. 
And the good part about it was we were able to find really good deals. That was our strength. So we just partnered up on our first couple of deals with a guy who was already doing exactly what we wanted to do. And so he brought the construction permitting process expertise. We brought the really great deals and it was a perfect marriage. So yeah. we kind of leaned on mentors and uh, experts to get us that knowledge that we didn't have. And we also tried some things on our own and failed a ton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. That firsthand experience just doesn't get any better. That's how you really <laughs> learn. Um, and, you know, I've talked about it quite a few times on my podcast so far on other episodes where I'm a big believer in coaching and mentoring and having people outside of yourself that are looking in on your business and on your life to just kind of give you some guidance and make sure you don't make some mistakes. You know, some people look at, uh, you know, we're getting a coach or a mentor or you're joining a mastermind group. They look at it as a cost, but mm -hmm. I never see it as a cost. It's always uh, what, what type of value I'm achieving out of those different experiences, right? So it sounds to me like with you and, and your business, you wouldn't have probably got that far had you not had these other people you brought into the business. Would you agree with that? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. There was a couple of key mentors early on that if we weren't vulnerable or we didn't leave our ego at the door enough to say, Hey, please teach us and we'll, we'll do whatever we can for you. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have been as successful as we were because right. we, they, we leaned on them for a lot of things and they were great for us. And still to this day, I do the same thing. You know, I have a performance coach that I pay to help me make better decisions in business and, you know, top athletes have coaches, right? So why, why shouldn't we? Yeah, no, that's, that's exactly it. Um, you know, if you look at the number one, you know, top in any, in anything, really, they have coaches. So if you're trying to excel and be really at the top of anything, why don't you, right? Yeah. No, no one makes fun of Tom Brady for having Bill Belichick as a coach. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And they have a lot of success because of it. And so um, I think that's a really important point. Now, are you still developing now? Yeah, so I recently just sold my equity in that real estate development company. Um, so currently not working on any development projects. My team, the team at CC still is. Um, I got a triplex in Quincy, Massachusetts that I'm holding on to. But right now I'm isolated, focused on building the consulting and ad advising business. Okay, so that's a good segue. So let's talk about that for a minute. What type of uh, consulting business is this? You know, I was looking over your website. It looks like you're really focused on trying to help people kind of get out of their own head, right? And get to the next level in whatever endeavor they're doing. So talk about that for a minute. What type of consulting are we talking? Yeah, 100%. So biggest thing that we're, we're, what I'm doing here at Elevate Advisors is, yeah, like you said, helping one, people get out of their own head in terms of the mindset of entrepreneurship and two, really deep diving into their business and saying, okay, what are the systems and processes you need to set up in your business to live the life you want to live? You know, maybe that is scaling to $10 million. Okay, cool. Well, what do we need to do system wise and process wise and structure wise to set your business up for success so you're not working 80 hours a week and hitting a wall. Maybe you want to sell in a few years. What does that look like? So really helping seven figure entrepreneurs take back their control of the business in terms of not working 80 plus hours a week to make no money. Cause I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs get on that hamster wheel and it's a really bad, it's a really brutal hamster wheel because you join this entrepreneur world to get out of that, to be able to set your own pace and to live your own life. But then very quickly you wind up becoming, building this Franken business where it's kind of controlling you and you're not controlling it. So that's really what I'm doing at Elevate is helping people set up systems and processes in their business. And then yeah, helping them with their personal performance too, because you need to be just as hyper focused on living that fulfilled life so that you can serve your business better. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, Gosh, it's so important. Um, it's very hard. The problem, I know I struggled with this at the very beginning. Uh, actually, Dan will, uh, Dan would attest to this because he gave me a hard time for a long time about doing this. But, you know, as an entrepreneur, as you start a company, this is truly your baby. It's something where you start it, you watch it, you know, go from inception to maybe now you start building in revenue. And now all of a sudden you're building and bringing out a lot, a lot of revenue and you don't want to let it go. You don't want to let go of control. Um, and so to kind of, to let go of that control is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a growing pain, right? 
Totally. And everybody has to go through it. Everybody has a struggle, the same struggle. Nobody's different, right? And so if you're out there and you're able to help people kind of get through that, that's massive, man. That value that you're bringing them to get them over that hump is really, uh, I mean, you can't even put a, a dollar sign on that, right? Yeah, totally. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's something I wish that I knew, just like you probably wish you knew back when you were building the business because I was in the same place. I was working till 2 a.m., grinding, hustling hard, and really the business was doing well, but it didn't start truly taking off until I took a step back and said, hey, wait a minute, I need to put these systems in my life so that I can serve my business better. And that's when I started doing the hard stuff. I started implementing actual processes and systems and focusing on building the team. So yeah, it's just something that I wish I had back then. Yeah. Yeah. And even it's evolving, right? It's an ever evolving thing where not only does technology change, but the business changes and you add more people or, you know, you get to a point where we added too many people, right. And then you need to downsize again and restructure. And I mean, it's a constant learning curve. So, uh, but very important to have somebody once again on the outside that's looking in at you and saying, okay, you know, this, this is what you're doing um, and kind of giving you some tips and tricks along the way. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I, I saw on your website, you have a couple of books. Um, let's talk about those for a second. What are they about? Who, you know, what are they focused on and uh, who would they be right for? Who would want to read those books? Yeah, absolutely. So the both books started as really just passion projects. Um, you know, my first book, Lose Your Limits, really started out. I just graduated college. I started really getting the hang of this entrepreneurship thing, personal development. And I started realizing how many limiting beliefs I had in my life and how many limiting beliefs I saw in other people's lives all the way through growing up. Like I said, I was, I was born in a really small town in New Jersey where no one really ever leaves. I was like one of the few that ever got out of the town. And I just noticed there's so many people with limiting beliefs and I had them myself. So I wrote the book for recent college graduates or college age students that were basically looking for a way to break through those limiting beliefs and really live the life you wanted to live. That started out as a complete passion project, put it on Amazon and it, it became a bestseller, which was really awesome. Um, what's even better is people emailing me and telling me the, the impact that it's had in their lives, which is awesome. The second book, Lose Your Limits, Grow Your Business came out of, once again, a passion project for entrepreneurs kind of like what we just spoke about in terms of personal development. It was how to help an entrepreneur go from a struggling business owner to a limitless entrepreneur through becoming the person necessary to run a seven figure business. So it's, it's quasi personal development specifically for entrepreneurs. And, uh, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm really passionate about helping entrepreneurs become the person capable of running the business they want. Yeah. Definitely, man. Well, it's hard in a society today where we go to, you know, we go to school, maybe you go to college and in college they teach you, you know, exactly what was the old method of doing things, right? Go get a job, you know, work your life away, have somebody else control your time. And then, you know, at the end you might get some sort of a retirement, but the reality is that that's so far from the truth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I was talking with somebody recently about, in my opinion, upper education in a way is kind of a scam for people out there because, you know, they say, oh, come pay me all this money at this university level to get this education that's going to give you this piece of paper that says that you're educated and then you can go out and get a job that's going to be able to pay back the debt. But in a lot of times, the debt these people are taking on is massive, right? And they get out of school and they can't find a job that's, you know, going to pay them what they need at all. And so they end up, you know, struggling um, through this false promise that was originally promised to everybody. I know, um, you know, when I, I did go to college. I went to the University of Iowa. And um, as I really, I did, I just, I went because that's what we were supposed to do. There wasn't a question about it, right? Um, and I, I just, I kind of think that's wrong for a lot of people. Gosh, I can't agree with you more, man. Uh, I'm hyper passionate about the education system and needing a reform of some sort all the way. I, I think from all the way from high school through the college program. Yeah. Same thing. I went to college just because like I said, nobody in my town went away. And if you did, you went to college. So I went to university of South Carolina, 
yeah. not a deep school and went through it and very, very, very close to just going into law school because that's what I thought people needed to do to be successful and living that life. And luckily my eyes were opened by that internship, but yeah, it's, I, I do feel like it's a scam and it's something really does need to change with the education system because it's leading people into a result driven, unhappy, unfulfilled lifestyle. And I think that's going to be coming to a head pretty soon here. Yeah. Yeah. Things, things are changing, but at the same time, it can't be like that for everybody because not everybody out there is an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's lots and lots of ways that you can be what's called an, I, I think I'm, I definitely didn't make up this word, but an intrapreneur, right? Where you work for a company, but you take entrepreneurial leadership within that company, right? Mm -hmm. and for a lot of people, that's the right way to go because totally. I both know that being an entrepreneur is hard. I mean, it's not easy and it changes and things are, there's always new problems that come up and having the mental strength in order to get through those sometimes is very difficult. Not saying that not everybody could do it, but it's just not for everybody, right? Totally agree. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. I think a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs get on the high horse of like the only way to happiness is entrepreneurship. And for a lot of people that is true, you know, I feel like I, I love entrepreneurship. I love everything for me, but I feel like true happiness is meaning. And if you can find meaning working for a nonprofit or writing poetry or working within an organization and having the entrepreneurial spirit, who am I to judge that? That's to me, that's happiness and fulfillment in its finest form. So I think it's all about just having meaning in what you do. Definitely. Definitely. And I, you know, I appreciate you saying that. I, uh, so, you know, you, you, you went through college, you learned the entrepreneurial way, you know, you started a company, then you sold the company, you got into another company. Now you just sold your shares with that. Now you're focused on helping other people through consulting. What does five years from now look like for, for Christian? Gosh, great question. Five years from now, looking like for me, for me, it's looking like an expansion of what I'm doing now. So right now I'm working with seven figure entrepreneurs uh, to help them live their best life. Five years from now, I want to be help working with young entrepreneurs doing personal performance uh, masterminds and groups within my company. And I also want to be taking a pretty heavy stance on the, what we just talked about education disruption. So I, I'm working with a couple of nonprofits here that are doing K through 12 education in a totally different way. And using the scrum methodology to actually educate and self-direct education with children. So those would be the three things that I'd still be working on five years from now. Um, and then on the personal side, you know, I'm, I'm engaged. So married with kids as well. So yeah. Yeah. Are you married now? I am engaged. Oh, good. Oh, you just said that. <laughs> okay. Uh, good for you, man. That That's exciting. Um, I think it's, that's definitely a hurdle that you have to jump through. I'm not married yet. Um, you know, who, who knows when that's going to happen exactly, but it's uh, definitely in the future. So uh, congrats for that. That's, that's huge. Thanks. I appreciate it. So, you know, I think that's a great transition into uh, what we call a lightning round. Are you ready for a lightning round? I'm ready for the lightning round. All right. What is your hashtag invest this tip that you can give our listeners to keep them moving forward? Tip to keep them moving forward. Something, something we talked about a lot in this, on this talk already is get mentors, get coaches. Um, you know, even if it's a, a free mentor that is just somebody who's two steps ahead of you in the business that you want to be or where you want to be in life, get mentors, talk to them, buy them coffee, ask them a ton of questions because that's, that's a really great way to grow. Yeah, that, that's huge. Thanks for sharing that. And for all the listeners out there who don't have a coach, Every coach out there wants to help you. I think that we thrive. Everybody thrives. If you've been in the business or in any part of uh, a business where you have the opportunity to help somebody else and coach them, you want to do that, right? So they're out there waiting for you. So thanks for sharing that. Um, what, what is your favorite book and what has that, uh, what impact has that had on your life? Yeah. Favorite book came out of really, really, transitional period of my life, senior year of college, the four agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, for, yes. Changed my life. One of the first personal development books I read, and I read it because somebody told me that I had to read it really quick. It's a 130 page book and it blew my mind and changed my life. Like working to live by those principles dramatically increased my relationships. It increased my well being and my happiness. It, uh, it definitely had one of the most fundamental impacts in my life. 
I would 100% agree with you on that. Um, that that book in particular changed my life. It was at a very transitional point in my life when, when that happened. I was breaking up with an ex girlfriend and was just really questioning a lot of things and you know my actions and why the whole thing happened and um, you know it was after a four year long relationship so mm-hmm. or a three and a half year long relationship but regardless you know long time and um, made a big impact so thanks for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we talked about coaches and mentors, so I'm sure you have some, uh, who's giving you the best advice and what does that impact then? Yeah. Who's giving me the best advice back in my rookie year of that student painting, uh, franchise, I was pretty, pretty downtrodden and depressed. I just lost all of my employees and I still had $40,000, uh, in the summer to produce. I had customer issues. I was a bad manager at back then. Um, uh, and <laughs> I was telling, huh? you were learning. I I was learning. I was pretty down in the dumps. And this uh, coach or mentor of mine who's been through the business, he runs a $20 million company now, just laughed at me one day. And he's like, you know, it's funny because you you don't even know that you can't fail. And I was like, okay, okay, Chris, I understand positive attitudes always win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, you don't understand. You can't fail. I was like, Chris, I need help here. I don't need a positive mindset. And he's like, no, as long as you don't quit, you can't fail. And you're not a quitter, Christian. And right from there, it was like, oh, man, I just can't fail as long as I don't quit. Change the game. And every time I'm in a hard spot, I just think of that quote. Yeah, man, that, that is huge. I, I give that all the time. If you never give up, you can never fail because you just keep getting back up and trying again, right? Yeah, you just keep learning. So I uh, really appreciate that quote. Um, how do you like to give back? You know, uh, we're so blessed to be in the positions that we're in. What do you do to give back? Yeah. Favorite ways to give back is one, uh, talking to as many young people as possible when they reach out for help, you know, young, young entrepreneurs, young adults, just taking the time to grab coffee with them if they're in San Diego or jumping on a zoom talk and talking with them. So that's kind of an informal way. I love to give back. I always keep time open for that. Uh, A formal way I love to give back is volunteering in schools. So I volunteered at inner city high school in Boston. And then out here in San Diego, I I try to speak at as many high schools as possible about mindfulness, being present, entrepreneurship, et cetera. Awesome. Yeah, that's huge. And I'm sure you're touching a lot of people that way. Um, Mindfulness. I'm just going to take a guess. Are you a daily meditator? I, I am a daily meditator. Yeah. I, I just happen to be the same, man. So I get it. Um, where can the listeners reach you? If they want to find out more about you, if they want to, you know, talk about maybe some consulting or figure out how you might be able to benefit them, where can they find you? Yeah. Uh, most active place I am is on Facebook. So, you know, it's facebook.com C Chasmer and then on my website, lose the limits.com. They can check out, I have some free guides on there and they can always contact me anytime and I'm happy to reach out and talk to anybody. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey man, Christian, I really appreciate you being here today and kind of going over your, your journey so far, all the way starting in college to building up a couple businesses, writing a couple books, and now reaching out to touch people and help, uh, you know, help other people build their business. You know, that's huge. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Scott. It's been awesome and it's been great, uh, great talking. Yeah, man. Sounds good. Well, we'll talk to you real soon. Yeah. Have a good one. Okay. See ya.